Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed and intrepid listeners of Midnight Marinera, it is with the deepest melancholy that I must come to you tonight with this news on what should be a joyous occasion. The Pasta Shade, your longtime host, is no more. He has been recalled to the fickle zeitgeist, disillusioned by the powers that both create and destroy we shades of the night. There is little hope that we shall meet again on this plane, and for that, I am truly sorry. The circumstances of his departure are complicated, but can be gleaned in his audio logs, the very recordings he had traveled so widely to gather and hope to share with you in this next season. As per his last request, I have agreed to see these stories presented to you and continue Midnight Marinera in his stead. He made it clear that this was of utmost importance and that you must all listen well and carefully. It is the least I could do for my dear friend. What you are about to hear and will continue to hear going forward are 12 stories collected by my erstwhile colleague, as well as the recorded circumstances of how he came to gather these accounts. Following this, however, the future of Midnight Marinera is uncertain. My duty is to the carnival, and I cannot overstep my bounds for longer than was asked of me. Whatever transpires in this coming year, the fate of the show is in your hands now. I can do no more. Know that my carnival is always here for you, intrepid listeners, and that tonight we mourn together. Until we next convene. Ah, yes. There is nothing like the smell of an old theater. Each plaster, worn leather, makeup powder, and dust. Oh, so much dust. Now, if I have played my cards right... Good Lord! Show it! <laughs> then this theater is not as abandoned as I thought. Wonderful. That's right, Dennis. The grave cannot hold me back, and now it calls to you. Join us, my love. N- never! Stay back! The old man prepared me for this! But even as Dennis holds aloft the ancient charm, he feels the icy pull of fear and despair making his limbs weak. His hands shake, his muscles feel atrophied as the specter of Gwen glides ever closer, cutlass in hand. You hesitate even now. You should have acted faster to save me, and now your fear will keep you from saving yourself. But don't worry, we'll be together at last. As the blade flashes down, the irony of his engagement gift finally comes full circle to Dennis. It was the sword that he had opted to give Gwen instead of a ring. A symbol of unity, after all. No, Gwen! No! It would seem that, in the end, Gwen really did get her point across. Too bad such thoughtful gifts can lead to sorry conclusions. But at least now the bride and groom are no longer parted by death. And so concludes the sordid tale of love lost and found to the toll of... Wedding Hells! <laughs> oh, I didn't know we had an audience. Uh, are you local? Oh, I'm afraid not. I like to drift to wherever echoes of old stories still haunt. I understand radio plays used to be broadcast from here, and it looks like they still are. It's true to a degree. We are Captured Oral Fantasy Theater, and we do our part to keep the audio drama alive. Excellent! I'm actually collecting stories for audio dramas myself, for Midnight Mirror and and I thought coming here would get me back to the roots. You, uh, wouldn't have to have any tales of terror lying around, would you? For Midnight Marinera? In that case, we might have something. We're in the middle of rehearsal right now, but, uh... You provide the tale, you provide the flavor. It's what we do. All right. This will be interesting. Let's see. How about a classic? We do have that one Poe story. Ah, we haven't really covered anything by Poe yet. What do you have in mind? The facts of the case of M. Valdemar. How does that sound? It sounds intriguing. Very well, my friends. Let's hear it. Great. Give us a bit to get in character. (laughs) 
and you are in a state of complete and utter relaxation. You are unconscious to anything outside of my presence. No other sensation reaches you but the sound of my voice. You will obey my every command from this moment onward. Do I make myself clear? You may speak to answer, and you shall respond to every question I ask truthfully. Do you understand? Yes. Good. Now, tell me your name. I am Ernest Valdemar. And where are you? I am asleep. I do not know. You are seated in a chair in the middle of a meadow. The sun is warm, the grass soft and damp. A cool breeze billows past you. Can you smell the flowers? No, I do not. Breathe in the smell. Breathe deeply. Inhale. Then exhale. smell the flowers. Stand up, Mr. Valdemar. Stand and go pick them. Mr. Valdemar, you will stand and pick the flowers. Oh, for goodness sakes! <laughs> Drat! I really thought I was onto something that time. Are you all right, Ernest? <coughs> Good heavens. Uh, all right enough for a dying man, I suppose. What happened? How deep did I get this time? Sadly, not as far as I would have liked compared to last time, but deep enough that you were teetered into the realm of sleep properly. Huh? Well, in that case, I should have have you lulled me to sleep every night. <laughs> <sighs> it's getting more and more difficult. Oh. If only the therapeutic nature of the mesmerism was what I sought. This is our third session, and I still cannot manage to get you completely under my control. <laughs> it's not as if I'm trying to resist, Preston. Perhaps there is an angle to this practice you've not managed yet. <coughs> <sighs> Perhaps. But even so, it doesn't seem like this treatment is helping you much. <laughs> I did not agree to be your subject for the sake of treatment, my friend, but it is a fair distraction. It's not as if I have much time left on this earth anyway. Uh, but a wonder you take it so well, Ernest. In some ways, yes. Not many know the moment when they will die, but at least I can predict my end with some certainty and prepare. My doctors have confirmed this physicist is utterly untreatable, yet entirely chartable. I have time to get my affairs in order, make peace with things, try some unusual things, and... Hence my willingness to accept hypnosis. Which I appreciate. And since we're on the subject, uh, there's been something I've wanted to ask you about. Oh? Ask away. Hmm. Well, in my three years of studying mesmerism, I have never once seen a particular method attempted. I mean, you're familiar at this point with how the magnetic influence of the suggestion arrests all natural functions, yes? I suppose. Well, it is not just the mind that gets influenced, but the body as well. Everything halts at the command of the skilled mesmerist. So, what if... What if someone attempted to mesmerize a subject when he, or she was in Articulo Mortis. At the moment of death? Indeed. <laughs> Balderdash, you said yourself you were struggling with keeping me in such a state, and I'm a willing subject. Well, might not the subject be even more susceptible to influence when in a state like this? It is my belief, Ernest, that, that I might be able to slow the encroachments of death and perhaps stop it altogether once the trance has been set and held. You said yourself no one has ever succeeded in this, Preston. N no. That no one has ever attempted. You also said yourself, not many know the moment that they will die. But 
You do, Ernest. You have a strong idea of when it will happen. And I can be prepared. The circumstances are ideal to attempt this. Hmm. It would be quite a remarkable feat if it succeeded. Ah, uh, and are you willing to let me try this with you? I mean, who knows what we could learn? Think of the possibilities. <laughs> <coughs> well, I suppose that prolonging my wretched existence would not be so bad if it meant a possible breakthrough of science, philosophy. <laughs> a lifetime, Ernest. All right. All right. Why not? I can see. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a grim thing to ask, but uh, I am grateful nonetheless. <coughs> Don't thank me yet. Wait until I'm on my way out and then thank me. If it is true, and you can put a wall between me and the Reaper for even a short time, I'll be impressed. <laughs> then I ask that you give me some notice when your physicians recognize it is your last day. It can be done. They tell me that they can predict with near absolute certainty the very hour. I will send for you well before that time once I know. Oh, excellent. To be honest, uh, I'm surprised you agreed. Don't lie to me, Preston. You knew this would intrigue me. I'm dead regardless if you succeed or fail, but at least this will make the whole thing a little bit more interesting. Hello? Uh, good evening. Uh, I received a letter from Mr. Valdemar asking for my presence. It's urgent. Oh, you'll be Mr. Chandler then. Please come in. Thank you. I'm Theodora Linnell, Mr. Valdemar's nurse. He was very insistent that you get here. Been asking for you. Well, I came as quick as I could. How is he? Stable for now. Dr. Dorman and Dr. Fielder have made him as comfortable as possible. But it's only a matter of time. Then his condition was worse than I thought. I last spoke with him not ten days ago, and he seemed fair enough. He'll be relieved you're here. And to be completely serious, Mr. Valdemar, there's little to be done at this point. Hence why I must write my memoranda now. Before you go, I would ask that you take this and ensure... Hmm. Mr. Nell, who is this? Ah, oh, Preston. You got my note. I sent it half an hour ago. And I am here fifteen minutes after reading it. On the dot. <laughs> Punctual as ever. <clears throat> Gentlemen, this man is a good friend of mine, the one I sent for. Hmm. The mesmerist. Good evening. We were just about to depart, to be honest. There's nothing else to be done. Hmm. So I've been made to understand. Might I have a word with you both before you leave? Yes, yes. Let's step outside. Farewell, Mr. Valdemar. May you rest in peace. Bah, you don't have to worry about me overhearing. I know the worst of it. <laughs> I've got this, sirs. You can go. Thank you, Miss Linnell. Uh, you can be frank. What exactly is his diagnosis? The man is a lost cause, as we've known for some time. His left lung barely functions in a semi-osseous state, and his right is making up for it while practically enmasked with tubercles. The state has spread through very rapidly. We believe he may have suffered an aneurysm just before we were called, and it's a wonder he's held on at all. And how soon do you feel that he will pass, then? We've agreed that it is going to be about midnight tomorrow. Yes, and because this is an inevitability, our services are no longer required. He'll be left in Miss Linnell's care for his final hours. And I would request that you at least look in on your patient one more time before that faded hour. Would you be willing to come back again tomorrow night? Why should we do that? Well, I aim to attempt an experiment that, well, should I succeed will have extraordinary results. Ernest agreed to this some time ago, to be put into a state of a trance just prior to his death, and have witnesses to observe the outcome. Nonsense. You may be able to convince him of your abilities, but I've yet to see any mesmerist who wasn't some form of charlatan. It's all stage magic. Hmm, not so. And I will prove it to you both, if you will only return at eight tomorrow. That is when I will begin the process of rendering your patient... 
my friend, under my mesmeric power. And we shall see what happens. Well, now I am intrigued, sir. Very well. I shall return at that time. <laughs> As shall I, but only to ensure Mr. Valdemar's security with you around. Well, thank you both. Ernest and I will both appreciate it, to be sure. Then we shall see you then. Good night. Good night. Everything all right? Oh, perfectly so. They'll be back again tomorrow night. Took to your idea about mesmerism, did they? I'm surprised. Well, it took a little convincing, but the only person I still need assurance from is you. Yes. <clears throat> it's definitely the end approaching. I feel it, Preston. I'm still willing. Let's begin right away. Well, I prefer to wait until the doctors come back. It has to be as close to the moment as I can. And I would like reliable witnesses, just in case something goes awry. Reliable? You've got the most reliable witness right here in Miss Linnell. He told me all about the plan when the note was sent, sir. I'm supposed to stay and help as much as I can. And this is no different. Can it really work? It's never been attempted before. I'm prepared to take notes. I'm good with details, and I swear I won't miss a thing. <laughs> In all honesty, she's been a better aid to me than those two so-called physicians. Miss Linnell is the only witness we need. All right, Miss Linnell. I would value your notes, but I still prefer waiting until the doctors. They'll be here by eight tomorrow. Eight? There's no time. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't a moment to lose. I'm... I'm scared to die, Preston. Loads as I am to admit it. Whatever you need to do to put me under, do it soon. You must stop death. Eight o'clock. Hold on just a little longer, sir. Let's begin already. Well, is it time? How much preparation do you need for this sort of thing? Well, I can start the process now. Uh, Ms. Linnell, we'll need those notes. Ready when you are. Good. The longer I take to bring on the effect, the more effective it should be. Ernest Valdemar. Please state clearly, before myself and these witnesses, that you are entirely willing to undertake this experiment of mesmerism in your present condition. Yes. I wish to be mesmerized. I fear you have deferred it too long. No, oh, very well. Watch my hands, Ernest. Watch. Focus only on that. Your eyes. Your body. Your mind. Hold my movements to your fullest attention. They will relax you. <sighs> yes. You are in a state of complete and utter relaxation. You are unconscious to anything outside of my presence. No other sensation reaches you but the sound of my voice. You will obey my every command from this moment onward. Do you understand? Good. Hold in place. Everything will slow, slow, slow. Yes, that's it. Remarkable. So, you put him to sleep. Now what? How long can you hold him like that? Well, in practice, as long as I like. He is indeed easier to influence as he is now. I shall continue making passes. I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing so you can write it down, Miss Linnell. Thank you. I was going to ask. And I intend to keep him like this for some time, all the way until the prescribed hour. Any objections? None from me. Or me. He is already in death's agony as is. Better he pass this way if none of this works. Uh, none for me either. No, good. Good. Give me some time. 
and he shall be completely under the mesmeric influence. Midnight. <sighs> yes. And? Is he... Let's find out. I invite you to examine him. He's still breathing. It's shallow, but it's there. Skin feels cold to the touch. Limbs stiff. Pulse is imperceptible. Oh, well, let's see to the effects. I'm going to move his right arm. Goodness, he really is in a trance. Uh, how did you do that? I merely influence him. He is living, but in a fixed state. He can move his arm, albeit rigidly. Remarkable! Can you ask him his condition? I can, I can try. His trance is perfect, so he should still respond to me without it breaking. Mr. Valdemar, are you asleep? Mr. Valdemar, are you asleep? Mr. Valdemar, are you asleep? Yes, asleep now. Do not wake me. Let me die so. Do you still feel pain in the breast, Mr. Valdemar? No pain. I am dying. Rest for now. Rest. Gentlemen, lady, I think it's wise we don't disturb him further. We're still not far past midnight. He could still pass any moment. She's right. I still need more proof. We'll then come back again tomorrow. We'll check on him together. If what I believe has happened is true, he will still be alive even then. Very well. We'll return in the morning and see. Day 2. 7 o'clock. Patient remains in a state of complete and utter trance. Breathing is perceptible only when a mirror is held to his lips. Still no discernible pulse. A astonishing. I really did expect him to be dead, but here he is. I'm sorry I doubted you, sir. No need to apologize, Dr. Fielder. I'm just as surprised. <laughs> My hypothesis works so far. Come now. Let's see if we can speak with him. Of course. Mr. Valdemar, do you sleep still? Mr. Valdemar... Well, at the risk of sounding crude, I believe your methods have, at the very least, forestalled death. I think it best at this point that we simply leave him undisturbed this state until he expires. I agree. It's tranquil enough. He seems to feel no pain. But nothing holds the grave back forever. In that case, how long do you think it'll be? A few minutes, I'd wager. If he's lucky. All right, uh... But let me speak to him one last time. See if there's more I can glean. Fair enough. Go ahead. Mr. Valdemar, do you sleep still? <gasps> Goodness! Where is he? There isn't the faintest sign of life now. No breath. No pulse. He is dead. Yes. It was only a matter of time. Poor Ernest. Still, I am impressed with what you've managed, my good mesmerist. It was truly a rare thing to see. <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen. I tried. I'm just glad that it went that far. Yes, yes. Well, as there's nothing else, we'll co-sign his remains to your care, Miss Linnell, and... Miss Linnell, what's wrong? His tongue, Doctor! Look! His tongue is moving! <laughs> Merely a death spasm, not at all uncommon. <gasps> what was that? Ernest! Oh, yes! No! Oh, I've been sleeping, but now, now, I am dead! Good God! <sighs> Miss Linnell! Oh, she's fainted! Help her! Uh, there you are, Miss Linnell. Uh, what happened? You, you swooned. You collapsed. 
We've moved you out of the room to recover. Are you all right? I think so. I'm so sorry. That's never happened to me before. Where are the doctors? Oh, in the other room with their patient, doing tests. What? Then what are we doing here? Who's taking notes? Well, I felt it best to let them handle it while I tried to rouse you. I mean, honestly, we're all fairly shocked when that thing happened, but perhaps it is best that you quit this process. No. I'm fine, really. I don't know what came over me. I'm not squeamish in the slightest. No? You cannot be when you're a nurse. I have seen far, far worse in my time. But to hear that voice... Oh, can you describe it for me? What did you hear? It was... like the voice was Mr. Voldemar's, but he did not move his lips when he spoke. Only his tongue moved, and it was so distant like it echoed from some cave somewhere. I can't imagine how that awful noise came from his mouth. I'm not even certain it did come from him. You recall all that? I told you I'm good with detail. Indeed. Because I know I heard it too, and it sounded to me just as much like you described. Oh, well, you're awake. Good. We were worried. Mr. Chandler told me everything. What have you found? <sighs> For all intents and purposes, the man is dead. No breath, no pulse, no response to any stimuli. Limbs are rigid, skin cold. But the rigidity is not like rigor mortis. It is the same consistency as when he was put under the trance. We attempted to draw blood from him and got nothing. It was as if every facet of him is frozen at the moment of death. And has he spoken again? No, no, I'm thankful for that. We, uh, attempted to address him as well, but nothing happens. Do either of you have my notebook? Yes, right here. You dropped it when you fainted. Thank you. I need to write this down. Miss Linnell, we felt it best that after what happened... Uh, with all due respect, Dr. Fielder, I want to stay on and record. But we cannot risk such a lapse happening again. It won't. That was unexpected, to be sure. But it will not happen again. I'll be prepared. And I agree with her. Her notations thus far have proven invaluable in this case study. We need her, gentlemen. <sighs> Dorman, what do you think? Well... This is damnly unusual case. I think at this juncture that it's best we keep it between the four of us. We'll need all the help we can get. Thank you. No, thank you, Ms. Linnell. I admire your dedication, even after what just happened. Simply doing my duty. Mr. Valdemar is my charge, and until he is well and truly dead, I intend to stay. Day two, two o'clock. No change in Mr. Valdemar's condition. Mr. Chandler attempted to move patient's arm via mesmeric command to no effect. However, when directly addressed verbally by Mr. Chandler, patient's tongue is seen moving and vibrating. Though no sound emerges, it has been decided to hire new nurses to keep vigil while we retire until tomorrow. Day three, nine o'clock. Mr. Valdemar remains how we left him with no alteration to yesterday's diagnosis. Some debate arose as to whether or not the patient should be awakened, but it was agreed that no good would be served by doing it. The experiment continues. Day five, eight o'clock. No change. Mr. Chandler's attempt at putting the rest of us into mesmeric rapport with the patient have had no success. Mr. Valdemar only responds to Mr. Chandler's voice and only through slight movement of the tongue. No reemergence of the voice heard on day two. Day seven. Mr. Valdemar, though seemingly dead, displays no signs of decomposition. All natural bodily function remains completely suspended. Yet the seemingly conscious movement of the tongue gives the impression of life. Dr. Dorman and Dr. Fielder argue about whether to declare him dead or to continue the experiment. Death, or what could be qualified such, has been arrested by the mesmeric process and waking the patient would instantly or speedily result in his dissolution. Day 20. No change. Attention of myself and the other nurses remains continual. No detail has been left out. It sometimes feels like we are taking care of a houseplant. Day 54. No change. Day 112. No change. Day 176. No change. Day 209, no change.
<sighs> this is getting tedious. Must we go out in such weather? We already know what we're going to find at Valdemar's residence. Well, it's a shame that the last medical student provided us little insight with his theories. True, but we can't let this bog us down. We must be near a breakthrough, some change or shift. Wishful thinking at this point. The man is both an invalid and a corpse, if that is at all possible. What else can we glean from a body frozen at the moment between life and death? A way to cure him, perhaps. Miss Linnell, how long have you been paying daily visits to Mr. Valdemar now? Um, let's see. 210 days, counting this morning. Seven months, Preston. Seven months we've continued this experiment, and it's stagnating even as Mr. Valdemar does nothing of the sort. Exactly. Now look at how completely the process of death has stalled for seven months. Through mesmerism, I have effectively locked Mr. Valdemar on this earth. Imagine what this can do for your medical profession. Even so, we've nevertheless exhausted every other avenue of experimentation, and there is only one course of action that remains. Which is? We end the trance. Wake him up and see what happens. It will end him. What other choice do we have? We are spending a considerable amount of time and effort right now with no change. We have a breakthrough on our hands, but not if things continue as we are. I concur. Valdemar's condition is unique, but incurable. It is time we learned more. I don't like it. You don't have to, sir. Neither do I. But I agree. We've got a proper record of everything, and my notes of late have been practically blank paper. We need to end the trance. Majority rules, Preston. Will you finally conclude things? Only you can shake Mr. Valdemar from this state. Very well. But I have no idea what to expect. Day 210, 12 o'clock. Mr. Chandler begins the process of pulling Mr. Valdemar from the mesmeric influence. Several careful movements and passes of the hands serve to draw the patient from state. So far taking 15 minutes. All other nurses dismissed. Only myself, Dr. Fielder and Dorman. And the mesmerist remained. Mr. Valdemar, can you hear my voice? Can you feel the tug of awakening coming upon you? I am drawing you closer to awakening. Can you now respond? There's something. Did that come out of him? Look at his eyes. They've rolled open. Strange sigh. Eyes open. Roll back. Just white. Yellow icor leaks from eye sockets. Oh, it smells awful. I draw you further. 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 I shall count backwards from ten, and on zero, I shall snap my fingers, and you will awaken completely. Do you understand? Tongue rolls rapidly. That's new. Very well. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. That sound again. Preston, ask him what he's experiencing. While he's like this, what is he feeling? Mr. Valdemar, can you explain to us how you're feeling or your wishes now? For God's sake, quick. Miss Linnell. Uh, uh, I'm fine. Taking everything down. Mr. Valdemar, shall I put you back to sleep? No. We're getting somewhere. Keep going. I did not ask you, sir. Ernest, what do... Dead! 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 Make him stop! Dead. I cannot undo the change! Dead. Then wake him! Hurry! Dead. Dead. Oh, 
saints preserve us. What happened? There's... There's nothing left. It's like he dissolved into that... That putrid mass. Or decomposed. What? We've kept him suspended between life and death for months. We freed him, and now his decay has caught up. We just saw seven months of rot take place in a matter of seconds. Many accounts of this unusual medical study have leaked out over the years, subject to misinformation, wild rumor, and outright fabrication. But thanks to the dedicated work of Theodora Linnell, we have brought you the realest and truest account that we can find, and the gruesome results. These are indeed... The, the facts, facts in the case of Mr. Mr. Valdemar! <laughs> Delightfully disturbing. You certainly know how to tell a vivid tale. It's just the right amount of radio melodrama. Thank you. We're kind of old pros at this. I'm sure my intrepid listeners will enjoy this tale. Uh, what do I owe you in return? Hey, this one's on the house. We're all united to keep radio theater going. It's our pleasure to help a fellow ghoulish troop out. Stop by and see us perform sometime. Oh, certainly. I must press on, but I won't detain your rehearsal any longer. If in things wind down a little, I shall definitely come to observe a performance. Best of luck on your journey, then. Yes. Oh, something did just occur to me. I think our listeners would appreciate a send-off from your company. Would you? You got it. <clears throat> this is Captured Oral Fantasy Theater in conjunction with Midnight Marinara. And until next we convene... Pleasant dreams! <laughs> 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 Midnight Marinera is written, produced, directed, and mixed by David King. This episode was done in collaboration with Captured Aural Fantasy Theater and features the voice talents of Ben Dicko, Nicole Ortega, Tomas Roach, and Michael Uribez. You can find more about them and their work at capturedauralfantasy.com. The voice of the ringmaster is Xander Mopus. This episode was recorded at LA Radio Studio in San Pedro, California, with special thanks to Mike and Ted for managing the recording. The Facts in the Case of Mr. Valdemar is adapted from the short story by Edgar Allan Poe. Are you glad we're back from the dead? Whether this is your first funeral, or you've crawled back for more, please subscribe and leave us some feedback by rating us and writing a review on Apple Podcasts, email us at midnightmarinera at gmail.com, or follow us on Twitter or Tumblr. And hey, if you'd like to give a little extra to the show and experience a fixed state between life and death yourself, consider becoming a patron and supporting our Patreon with a small monthly donation. This month's epitaph. Joel E. Hardly knew ye, yet we wish you well. We hope for heaven, but agree, you're probably in the other place. Thanks for listening, and happy Halloween.